We are all familiar with tissue scale wounds and wound repair. We cut ourselves, we bleed, and we heal. But we are much less familiar with cell healing, in spite of the fact that our cells are constantly being damaged and are constantly fixing themselves, and in spite of the fact that failed cell repair results in a variety of diseases, including certain forms of muscular dystrophy. One of the best ways to understand a cellular process is by watching it happen in a cell that is particularly good at it. Here we will study cell repair using frog oocytes, which are extraordinarily efficient healers. However, what we know about cell repair derives from study of many different cell types, ranging from sea urchin eggs to mouse muscle fibers to fly embryos. It is currently thought that cell repair depends on two processes initiated by inrush of calcium through the wound. First, fusion of vesicles with each other in the plasma membrane at the wound site, an event that is supported by much evidence yet has not directly been observed. Second, assembly and closure of a ring of actin filaments and myosin II around the wound. We will start by watching calcium. In this movie, the cells are filmed from above, providing a surface view of healing. If we slow the movie down, we can see some features of the calcium response. A bloom of increased calcium that extends far beyond the wound, a region of very high calcium in the center of the wounded area, and then, a bit later, a ring of elevated calcium that closes inward. Now we're going to visualize membrane lipids where calcium is high in the middle of the wound. It looked like vesicles were fusing with each other. Again, we will slow the movie down and take a closer look. Same experiment, but this time we will try an edge view. Wow. Okay, that was not simply a couple of vesicles fusing with each other. That was a mad orgy of fusion. We definitely want to take a closer look. Are the vesicles fusing with the plasma membrane as well as each other, as envisioned by the patch hypothesis? We can test this possibility by wounding in the presence of external dextran. If a vesicle fuses with the plasma membrane, it will take up the dextran. Clearly, many of the vesicles do fuse with the plasma membrane, as well as each other. Let us now look and see what happens to Inexin. Inexin has been implicated in muscular dystrophy, but what it does in wounds is not well understood. The inexin is tightly focused around the edge of the wound and associates with vesicles before they fuse with each other. Thus, it may participate in patching. So what about the response of the cytoskeleton to wounding? We will start by looking at actin filaments and myosin II, which work together to power contraction. The actin filaments and myosin II are not quite right on top of each other. Rather, it looks as if the myosin II concentrates inside the actin filaments.
How do actin filaments and myosin-2 achieve their characteristic segregation? One way to address this question is to follow the behavior of two proteins that control actin filaments and myosin-2, CDC42 and Rho. Active CDC42 can stimulate assembly of actin filaments. Active Rho can stimulate assembly of myosin-2 filaments. What activates the CDC42 in the row? The answer might be our old friend, calcium. Remember the calcium ring that develops as the bloom recedes? Let's follow calcium, active CDC42, and active row all at the same time. Sure enough, the ring of calcium appears before and is positioned right over the active CDC42 and the active row.